This lesson covers ideas behind model selection and cross-validation. In particular, we're going to use data on the Palma French portfolios and a simple multi-factor model to examine whether we see any differences when we use alternative methods. The lesson also discusses how we can automate selection of models using the various techniques we've discussed in the course, including AIC, BIC, specific to general, general to specific, and finally cross-validation. The first step is to set up the workspace. We're going to start by clearing the data, closing any open figures. We'll also do a little trick with the random number generator where we reset it to the default. This is useful when we're using simulation methods like cross-validation, since it will ensure that we get the same output every time we run the code. In practice, one needs to be careful when doing this because we may not want the same output, but for the purposes of this exercise, it makes sense to have the same output all the time. When ready, we can run the contents of a cell by pressing Control and Enter. This first box does some setup. Here we use series index to denote which series we're going to study. In this case, we'll start with series 6. We then set up the x variables, which are going to be the regressors in all of the models. Finally, we select the y variable that will be the left-hand side, which depends on the series index. The next step is to make sure that there are no missing values in the data, so we just remove any values, any rows that have NANDs. Next, we construct two cell arrays. The first contains just the names of the variables, which will make outputting information about the selection easier. The second contains a cell array, which is an array that can contain almost anything. But in this case, the cell array will contain lists of regressors. For example, the first model will have nothing. The second model will only have column 1 of x, the third column 2, the fourth column 3. The fifth will have columns 1 and 2 and so on until the last, which has the entirety of x. Finally, we set up some arrays to hold the computed values of the AIC and the BIC. Now that we've set up all the components, computing the AIC and the BIC is fairly straightforward. We simply loop across all of the models, and for each model, the only value we actually need to know is the variance of the residuals. Using the variance residuals, and combining that with the number of regressors in the model, in this block denoted k, allows us to compute the AIC and the BIC for each model. Finally, we can output the variables that are selected. In this problem, it's a strong factor model, and so all variables are selected. This won't be the case in all models, especially when working with models where there isn't an incredibly strong relationship between the left-hand side variable and the right-hand side variable. The cell contents can be run by pressing Control enter To start the specific to general method, we need to define a few values. The first is the size we're going to use when deciding to add a new variable to the model. The second two variables have contained the included values, that is the variables that have been already selected and will appear in the model. We start with nothing. And the last one is simply a value to make sure that the algorithm runs at least once by setting the excluded t stats equal to infinity. So the specific to general method is run as long as there is any large excluded t-stat. That is, if any of the variables that were previously excluded has a large t-stat, we want to continue to run, and we'll only stop when all of the excluded variables have small t-stats. The easiest way to do this is to use a while loop. Here I use a convenient function called setDiff that will take the difference of two sets. So in this case, to find the set of variables that have been excluded, I take a set difference between the, all the set of all possible variables, that is 1, 2, 3, and the set that has been included. One of the main two steps of the specific to general method 
is to loop across the set of excluded variables, add each variable one at a time, and finally to estimate the model. Once the model's been estimated, we can compute the t-statistic for the variable we just added, which, as you can see, will always be the last value. So in this loop, we estimate the model, we add the variable, estimate the model, get the position of the excluded, which is just the value of excluded, and then finally we set the t-stat for that position to the final t-stat in the model. The most important step of the specific to general algorithm happens when we need to decide which variable we should add. So in this case, I'm going to find the variable I should add using the max function with two arguments. So what we have here is the maximum of the absolute value of the excluded t-statistics. So as long as one of these excluded t-statistics is larger than our critical value, in this case it should be 1.96, then we want to add a variable. So once we've decided we want to add a variable, which happens when the if clause is satisfied, we use the max function with the second argument to find the location of the excluded t-stat. Once we know the location of the excluded t-stat, we simply add this to the list of included, and then for convenience we simply sort this list. Finally, the algorithm runs as long as there are any excluded t-statistics, and when it completes, we see that statistics to general selects columns 1, 2, and 3, which is also all variables. We start the algorithm with two values. The first is just to set the included t-stat to 0, which will make sure that we're always going to run the algorithm. The second is to set up a list that will include the variables that are excluded. General to specific starts with all models included, and so the set of excluded should be empty. General to specific runs as long as there is an included variable that has a relatively small t-stat. In this case, we're using the same critical value, which will be 1.96. So as long as any included t-stat is less than 1.96, we want to continue to run the algorithm until we have eliminated that variable. The easiest way to do this is to use a while loop. Here I also use the set difference function to find the set of variables that have been included. In this case, I take the difference between all possible variables and the set that have been excluded. Next, I set up the regressors that will include only the variables that are included because these are the ones that we wish to test to see if any of these are statistically insignificant. The biggest component of the general to specific algorithm is to estimate the model using, using only the variables that have been included, in this case, which I've done temp x, and then to get the t-stats of these variables. Here, I've set up a, an array called included t-stat, where I've set all values to infinity. This is to ensure that any excluded variables will not have important t-statistics, and it simplifies the algorithm, since I only need to look at the positions of the t-stats that have values. Finally, the core routine asks the following question. Are any of the included t-stats in absolute values smaller than my critical value? If none are, then the algorithm will end, and that will be the end. On the other hand, if any of my included t-stats seem to be relatively small, then I want to think about dropping a variable and rerunning the algorithm. Again, we use the exact same arguments here, except instead of using a max function, we use a min function. So we find the minimum of the absolute included t-stat, as we want to drop the variable that seems to have the least significance. We use the second argument to get the position. And once I know the position of the excluded variables, I simply add this position to my list of excluded. Note that when I add it to the list of excluded, I don't use the actual position, because this is the position relative to the original data, but is actually the, we need to use the, include, the position in the list of included to actually get the right position. When everything is done, I can run the algorithm, and here again, we see that general to specific selects all variables.
Finally, we move on to cross-validation. Cross-validation is in some sense the most complex because we have to run the model multiple times. This example uses k-fold cross-validation with five folds. The first line simply constructs a random permutation of the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way up to t. And this will be used to select the folds. So rather than just taking the data as they're given, we'll actually take a random permutation of the data and select that. This isn't essential to use cross-validation, but it's generally a good practice. Once I have the random permutations and the fold, number of folds defined, I can define the splits. So the splits are just going to be indices that I pre-compute so that I know exactly how many data points will show up in each block. It will also ensure that by using round, I ensure it's also an integer. The final few lines just set up some empty arrays to hold values, that is the sum of squared errors for the cross-validated data, the R squared for the full sample, and the R squared for the cross-validated sample. Cross-validation is a bit more like using information criteria in the sense that we're going to loop across all models. In this case, there are eight models. Here we start by defining the sum of squared errors for this model to be zero. We'll then add sequentially to this as we go through the five folds. We also simply define the x we're going to use in the model to be the original x matrices um, with index j. And finally, for good measure, we estimate the full model and save the r squared just so we can compare that to the cross-validated r squared a bit later. Next, we loop over the splits. The split indices will have both endpoints of the sample, and so I don't need to include all of them, but just all but the last one. So there are two basic blocks I need to compute. The first is the set of data that I'm going to delete. These data points are actually going to be used to do the sort of pseudo out of sample evaluation in the cross validation exercise. And the other are the set of data points I'm going to retain. These are going to be used to estimate parameters. Using these indices, I can set up a set of x data that I will use in the cross-validation. So I simply use the retained data points for my x data. I can do the same thing for my y data. And then, using the retained x and y, which in this case will include 80% of the original sample, I can estimate the in-sample beta that I will use to do the out-of-sample evaluation in the cross-validation. Finally, I need to compute the errors using the deleted data. So in other words, I use y delete minus x delete times the coefficients, where I separate the constant from the dynamic coefficients in this case. It simply makes things simpler, since the x's don't include a constant. Once I have those errors, I can finally compute the sum of squared errors by simply adding the errors for this 20% block of the data that I've deleted to the total sum of squared errors. Once this is done, I will just go back to the loop. The loop will iterate through the five folds, and that will give me the total sum of squared errors for this particular cross-validated sample. The last steps are to simply save the cross-validated sum of squared errors and to compute the r-squared for the cross-validated sample and the r-squared for the full sample. Once we've saved these, we can simply run the block and that will show us the results for, for the cross-validation exercise. So what we have here in the left column, we have the r-squared for the full sample and then we have the r-squared for the cross-validated sample. Then the second bit, we have the difference. One thing we can see is the difference is always negative. Although it's not monotonic, it could be the case that the difference can be actually larger for smaller models. So we can't always think of the difference as being something we can always use. The reason it can be f bigger for smaller models is that smaller models may have a lot of estimation error because they've excluded important regressors. And so when you exclude important regressors, residuals tend to get bigger. That then has an impact on estimation error quality. In this case, again, we can see the smallest cross-validation sum of squared errors is actually generated by the largest model. Again, this is because this is a particularly strong factor model where all the variables are relevant. This has been a brief overview of how we can take some of these model selection ideas and actually turn them into algorithms that we can use on arbitrary data sets. In this case, all of the models were selected to be the largest model. Because these are relatively strong factor models where all the variables are, are, in, are significant.
You can see though, for example, when you do cross-validation, if you add a regressor that doesn't actually contribute to the R squared, cross-validation will tend to drop that regressor. You can also see though, at least for this data or data similar to this, that the penalty applied by cross-validation is not particularly sharp, and so it may be the case that cross-validation is going to choose relatively large models.